A vortex is defined as being an area of fluid or air where the flow spins around an axis line that is straight or curved in shape. A vortex is the center portion of spinning air or water, and we see this in the form of the drain when you drain the sink of your water after washing dishes. When you pull that plug, the drain becomes a siphon as the air pressure within the pipe draws the water down into the drain. The swirling pattern slows down as the pressure decreases. Now this is the familiar pattern that shows us the natural pattern of how energy flows and how it changes velocity by a decrease or increase in air pressure. Now energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can, however, decrease or increase in its intensity. The higher the intensity, the more destructive the energy can be. The lower in intensity, the more calm or constructive or conducive to the environment energy becomes. I am, of course, speaking in terms of wind velocity and water turbulence when it comes to a vortex within nature. It's all a matter of perspective, I suppose, because hurricanes and tornadoes are destructive. However, however, that is only because of human engineering that has built society in the pathway of destruction. Outside of this unnatural state, vortexes or vortices are destructive, but only because they are seen more as God's cleansing agent to clean the earth. Tornadoes and hurricanes, whirlpools, can be seen as nature's vacuum. Vortices and nature's vortices are nature's method of cleanup. And after the natural disaster inside of nature, the regrowth process begins as decaying material left behind the storm creates a habitat for animals and replenishes the soil with nutrients in its due season. The vortex in nature is the powerhouse of nature, but that's not the only places that vortex vortexes can be seen. It turns out that these things are all around us, and if they are all around us, that can only mean one thing, that are we an expression of a vortex? Uh, that explanation is reserved for another video. But to help us along with the understanding yet to come, we kind of need to take a look at the fundamental properties of the vortex by first understanding the language of our Creator in Heaven. I will get to that in just a moment. Everything consists of energy. We know this through basic scientific principles within creation. The atom is the building block of all matter, and all matter exists in three states, solid, liquid, or gas. However, modern science has tweaked that a little bit. There is actually a fourth state of matter, and that matter is called plasma. This is a state of matter that acts like a gas, but it isn't. It's light and energy combined. This helps us to know that energy can be found in its infinite parts through understanding the quantum structure of the atom. Plasma energy is a conglomeration of atoms of the same structure that produce a quantum field that produce a force, a magnetic force, a vortex, or a toroid. Science calls energy what God's Word calls spirit. Plasma, in my own personal research and estimation, is what we are housed in a biochemical body. Those who are able to see plasma with an unaided eye see people's plasma energy outside their body. This is called auras. But there is a special apparatus called the Santilli Telescope that can help scientists see spiritual beings or plasma that do not have a biochemical body as we do but are seen here in this causal world but we can't see the plasma because their light falls outside of our visible light spectrum 
This is very interesting when we bring the details of science into biblical perspective. Because speaking of plasmas, I'd like to give you some pause for thought. The light beings that Ezekiel saw, you know, the real within a real concept, I believe this might be giving reference to something very interesting about our creation that has everything to do with magnetic lines, the toroidal fields of magnetism. I will talk about that in another video, but it makes sense within this video as well. I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north in an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by building and surrounded by brilliant light. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4. The story of what Ezekiel saw when applying the vortex magnetism is pretty amazing. But I don't want to get ahead of myself and jump around too much here in this video, so let's just get back to some basics of science that we already know. The atom is the smallest unit of matter that we can comprehend from a layman's point of view. The atom isn't the smallest unit of matter by any means, but to make this commentary easy to follow, let's just stick with what we know and not complicate things any more than what we need to. Science has taken apart the atom for us to learn from. Now inside the atom there exists the main area called the nucleus. That's the centermost portion of the atom. And this is where the electrons, they like to hang out just outside of the nucleus. And inside the, at or the nucleus there exists neutrons and protons. But staying out of the way of the nucleus, I'd like to just focus on the little tiny structures that hang around the outside of the nucleus. Now, electrons are what I call the agents of the atom that go out and find appropriate atoms to match themselves to or the entire atom itself to. They release their electrons. The atom itself releases its electrons or they absorb electrons in order to form a specific molecule that when linked up to other like molecules form a specific type of matter in a specific state. When you think about our structure as spiritual human beings, it kind of sounds a little bit like us where we absorb people's negative or positive emotional energy. And we also give out positive and negative emotional energy. You know that when someone you meet just kind of gives you the wrong feeling and they rub you wrong? That's your intuition because your energy patterns are not meeting up and are not congruent with that person that is giving you a slight uncomfortable feeling. Well, science knows that we are all made of atoms. We just can't get around this. And those atoms contain electrons that are in a constant state of mo motion or movement called vibration. Some atoms that are vibrating vibrate on a specific frequency to build our solid state of matter in the form of the human body. While other electrons are also vibrating, but they govern our spiritual states within us. Now this is extremely fascinating. When we plug in modern day science into the creative jurisdiction of the Bible to apply our minds to thought, we begin to see through a spiritual lens that truly does set us apart from the world we once knew. We clearly have been seeing through a glass very darkly, but once the veil is lifted, we can't unsee the things which we couldn't see before because God does tell us we live by faith, not by sight. We are spiritual and we are here to experience that which we cannot see in the spiritual through physical means. It takes living through a biological creation our bodies, this enhances our spiritual capabilities 
which allows us to appreciate who we are more and where we come from. Through living a physical existence, we are drawn to God's heart, which is spirit, and this makes our calling sure. We are being called home. To be reunited with God and to become one with him as we remain one with him for all eternity. So it makes sense that we should know who he is so that we know who we are and for what purpose we were created for. Understanding vortex math need not be complicated, but it can help us to understand this creational causal world in a way that makes better sense. To be taught in school that we are biological beings living by chemical design, serving no other purpose than to wake up and do what we feel we must do and do for others to make money, to make the world go round. This is slavery. And God is calling us to come up out of slavery by giving us knowledge. His knowledge is rooted in his language, and his language is unchanging as his language is love. His love is his character, and the language of numbers are what allow us to experience the spiritual portions of him that our spiritual portions of ourselves can fully appreciate. Math, in the form of it being a language, has been hidden by us by no mistake. Numbers cannot lie. Numbers are strategic as they are deliberate. It is God's language because numbers cannot change. In single form, the number one will always be the number one. In addition, adding the numbers three and six together will always add up to the number nine. A number is a number and unlike words, there is no guessing. There is no personal interpretation. And there's no room for personal reasoning when it comes to numbers. Numbers exist as they are, as they always have been, as they always will be. They are what they are, and they always will be what they have been. Numbers are absolute. They are the fundamental building blocks behind creation. God, who is spirit, used numbers to create a physical world. Numbers are a language that add to things. What I mean by that is if I have an apple and you give me an apple, I now have two apples. Numbers can create more. Numbers add, but they also take away. Numbers build upon as they enhance but they also act in the opposite way of taking away. And numbers were used to create creation. We see the golden ratio and the patterns of flowers and creation. Well, think of when a flower dies, that creational pattern is undone and numbers are taken away to cause decay. So I don't want to get too in depth here, but may I just give you an example? If I am building a house, I may need to add two more sheets of gyprock or drywall to complete that building of the wall. I may have a total of five sheets of drywall and I come up short, so adding two more sheets of drywall will allow me to finish up my job. However, that's when building a new house. What happens when a society has zoned a house for demolition? There is math in that equation as well. Now, no amount of drywall can fix dry rot. No amount of drywall can fix dry rot in a condemned building. Years of neglect may show that what once was a pristine home with the rating of a nine now has been devalued to a rating of two and that drywall has dry rot and is crumbling to the core of the house right down to the foundation. That's numbers being used to take away subtraction. Numbers in their pattern. Numbers in their patterning 
are either positive or negative. And that is the use that we see in addition and subtraction, division, multiplication. Math is used in creation, yes. But it's also my estimation that if numbers were used to create life with, numbers are also used to destroy or take away. This is seen in the natural phenomenon of weather vortexes as they are destructive depending on the size and where they form. What I'm trying to explain through these mental pictures is that numbers govern chaos and order in this world and God does say that in the scripture. Numbers are fascinating and for this reason people like Nikola Tesla became fascinated with numbers. And I can see why, but I will not promote his fascination of numbers as it seems in my humble opinion that he became so fixated on numbers that he worshipped them as his life revolved around the pattern of three, six, and nine. What is so important about these numbers? Well, the numbers three, six, and nine represent the creator and who he is. He is love and understanding that love is the image of God and knowing that God is unseen. We can conclude that love is the character image of God. I'd like to quote from Interstellar, a very fascinating science fiction movie. Maybe love means something more, something we can't yet understand. Maybe it's some evidence, some artifact of a higher dimension that we can't consciously perceive. Love is the one thing that we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. Maybe we should just trust that, even if we can't understand it. Now, I came across this quote from the science fiction movie Interstellar that I do believe reveals more than what meets the eye. I do believe that a lack of love is what created this physical world or what we created this physical world to become outside of God's creative jurisdiction. We are doing our best to create for ourselves a loving society, but we can't meet our expectations of what we hope to achieve because society's love falls outside the jurisdiction of God's love, 3, 6, and 9. And we are causing chaos for ourselves, destruction and decay, not just in nature, but within the hearts and minds of men and women and children also. That's because woven into the physical number system is a spiritual paradigm that transcends all matter. Love is the answer, as love is who God is, as love is the frequency, and love is also the velocity or the vibration. Love cannot be separated from God, and so love is found in all things created by God, including us. But we can't understand what love is because we refuse to understand who God is in totality. We still are not yet ready to be totally and completely dependent on Him. And I'll show you this example in just a moment. Numbers are dependent on each other, but they can stand alone. But they stand alone in a physical value. However, because they are God's language, they will always hold a spiritual value. At least three of them will. That, that spiritual value is a creational value that holds God's character. Always. Love. Now, God has no physical form. He is spiritual. The numbers 3, 6, and 9 represent the underpinnings of God as love governs all things. When God's love is taken out of the details of life, we get chaos. And I do believe that that could be mathematically equated if we were smart enough and brainy enough to do such a thing. When we become incongruent in the mathematical equation of creation that we call life, we become disheartened and devalue each other and devalue the system that God created for us. And so we fall into this paradigm 
of 666, creating for ourselves and doing for ourselves what we think God will not do for ourselves. Now, number three represents the Godhead, who is love in completeness. Six represents the frequency of love of the Godhead, and nine is the calculated number that combines love and its frequency together. The number nine represents vibration, force, and velocity the truth of spirit and truth in spirit. And the spirit of God, which is the wind or the ruha, was hovering over the waters, Genesis chapter one, verse two. Have you ever contemplated the numbering system that exists in your physical body? Five fingers, five toes, four limbs, two arms, two legs, two eyes, two ears, one mouth, one nose. But where are the three, six, and nine? This cannot be found. This is because these numbers are the numbers associated with God himself as he is spirit. The body was created in love, but it was made to be subjected to corruption and decay through our choice. We make the choice to love or not to love. To understand this, we should learn a little something, something about vortex now. Our mathematical system calculates the value of numbers and specific equations. Equations can be either right or wrong. There's no in between. However, the beauty of numbers is that they are expressed in truth, in totality. How we come up with the truth is to seek the answer and use the numbers appropriately according to the equations that they are placed in. It's like reading a sentence structure. However, numbers cannot lie. The only way that an equation appears to be incorrect is because it is. It isn't that the numbers are wrong. It's our conclusions, our addition, our subtraction or our multiplication or our division, somewhere we are at fault, not numbers. When we place our understanding, inference, judgment, presupposition within a mathematical equation, what that does not line up with the truth, within the value of the numbers that exist, we come up with the wrong answer. It's like saying one plus one is three. No, it's not. It's two. Somewhere the fault lies with us in coming up with the answer three. Now, many of us who struggled with math use this as a means to devalue ourselves. Why? Because we too were created with God's language of numbers. We spiritually gravitate to what is spiritually our foundation, love and numbers. We only assume numbers are physical. They are to a full point, and I will show you which numbers on this board are physical. But we are spiritually motivated, and so too are numbers. This is rooted in by design. Everything in life has and is a mathematical equation. It only appears that things are random, but they are not. We just do not have the mathematical equations and the mindset that equate all that we think and all that we do. That's God's job. That's not ours. When he created math, he knew what he was doing. He is the governing ruler of the spirit, and this means he knows every outcome, every purpose we set out for ourselves. He has to guide our steps because he knows we cannot know the mathematical plan for each coming and going of action and thought. If this portion of math were up to us, we would set ourselves up for disaster every time we turned around. We would turn this world into a complete state of chaos and destroy ourselves before we even began. Numbers keep order. It is we who miscalculate numbers to create chaos unknowingly. And maybe some of those who have hidden the number system against our knowledge have created chaos knowingly. Now, God shared with me some insight yesterday. And it flows well with this topic of study. You who are created in God's image, come to him in prayer. And you ask him for something. But without realizing that you're a mathematical 
a bunch of mathematical equations built around 369 frequency and, and vibration, you just imagine and perhaps believe in your heart that you're coming from a place of love, but society society has a different viewpoint of love than the love that God is. So when you come to him in prayer, in not in alignment with who he is, you don't receive what you ask for. What do you do? Okay, what, what do you normally do? Maybe you received a gift from God, but because you were expecting something different, you cannot appreciate what was given. Complaining is a way that we give the gift back to God, and he can't take it back. It's already been given. So it goes out there and sits and waits for someone else to receive, someone maybe who isn't as deserving, and you still go without. Now, this may not make sense to you, but understanding that everything is vibrational frequency and energy or spirit that is linked together by God's design, we can understand that our thoughts project our thoughts projected out in prayer or even with our speech patterns goes out. When we pray and are not in the same pattern of love as our Father, receiving from Him is extremely difficult. Mathematically speaking, the numbers of giving do not add up to the correct numerical value when we come to Him in prayer in our selfish greed and need. Instead of sowing harmony into our prayer, we are sowing chaos, tossing seeds to the wind. We are forming discord, and the fundamental rule of heaven is this, that you reap what you sow. When you sow in chaos, you will reap back chaos. Now, there's a deeper insight into this, as yesterday I was shown how myself and not always in tune and in aligned in proper prayer. And that has had some devastating after effects for me, especially in the realm of inviting toxic people and narcissists into my life. So stick around to the end of this video and I'll share that with you later on. So math is based on a numerical system that contains symbols that hold intrinsic value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All other numbers exist as combination of these numbers. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm just going to step out of the way for a moment and I'm going to let you see this diagram for yourself that there is a circular pattern. And if we were to draw a circle and place all these numbers, 1 to 9, along the edge of the circle, we would get this pattern that you see here that is labeled Old Diagram. This is the old school diagram, and I'd like to explain this to you as this helps you to explain, as this helps to explain the symbology of the triangle the ruler and compass that we see in Freemasonry. Secret societies have hijacked the value of numbers within the language of mathematics and hid it for themselves. When something is hidden and used in secret, it isn't meant to be shared. When something is not shared, it is then coveted to be used for self-motivation. God freely gave. He gave to us what was given to secret societies. They used numbers for spell casting and cursing to bind us so that we remain stagnant in our state of fear. We are to use numbers in a way that helps us to free ourselves and others so that we can freely unite ourselves to Him, God our Father. This understanding is being made known to us because it is time to loosen the bindings of the enemy so that we can be set free as we are free to use this for ourselves and for others in a way that adds benefit, not harm. We are to use this knowledge to set the captives free. And yes, although 
this seems long and drawn out, this understanding does have a point. This video is to help you understand and value telekinesis. Not only that, this understanding hopefully is drawing you deeper to understand who God is and who you are. So thank you for allowing me to share. Now looking at this diagram once again, I share with you the numbers 3, 6, and 9 in green color. This is just to separate them from the rest of the numbers as they represent God's spirit. The other numbers represent physical creation. Now, if you notice the numbers 3, 6, 9 form a triangle. This triangle has been used in a very negative way as the power of God has been used spiritually by our spiritual enemy to promote his own negative power. The triangle symbol is not something to be idolized. God tells us not to make graven images of anything. So this caused me to take a look at this patterning in a different way, right here. When you double the number three, you actually get an oscillating pattern between the number three and six. And this is also shown with the number six. So here on this diagram, I have arrows showing that there is an oscillating pattern between six and three. So when you double three, going at three, double, three plus three is six. Six plus six is 12, which can be broken down into one plus two equals three. So you take the, the, equate, the sum of six plus six and double that, 12. 12 doubled is 24, which can be broken down into two plus four equals six. So 24 doubled is 48. 4 plus 8 equals 12, which can be broken down into 1 plus 2 equals 3. So the doubling pattern of 3 is 6, 3, 6, 3, and it would be 6, 3, 6, 3, and continue. Now when you double 6, it's the opposite. It's 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6. So this shows an oscillating pattern, either this way or up and down. This is where you get, get the frequency from, the oscillating pattern. So when you double nine, this is very interesting because nine plus nine is 18, but you break 18 down, one plus eight equals nine. 18 doubled equals 36. When you double, when you break that down, you get three plus six equals nine. You double 36 is 72. You break 72 down, 7 plus 2 equals 9. 72 doubled is 144. You break down 144, 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals 9. 144 doubled is 288. You break 288 down, you get 18, which equals 9. You double 288, you get 576. You break down 576 into a singular digit, which equals uh, the smaller digit is 18. You break that down. 1 plus 8 equals 9. So it's 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. 9 is the constant. 9 does not change. 9 does not change. That is extremely interesting. So 3, 6, 9 forms a, an electrical pattern that governs these other patterns around the circle. So what about these other numbers? One, two, four, five, seven, eight. We can still double these numbers. One, starting at one, one plus one equals two. Two doubled is four. Four doubled is eight. Eight doubled, eight doubled is 16. But that is a double number, so we have to break that double number pattern into single dig digits. So 16 is 1 plus 6, which equals 7. So 16 doubled is 32. 3 plus 2 is 5. So then we have 32 doubled is 64. 64 broken down into single digits is 6 plus 4, which equals 10. 
that would bring us back to 1 plus 0 is 1. So this forms the red line here, intricate pattern. And there's something that I've noticed that is very interesting because using this diagram, we are shown that the numbers 1, 2, three, one, two and 4, as seen here, getting away from this ruler and compass symbol of, of uh, Freemasonry. Yeah. We want to use this one. And what happens is when you go 1, 2, 4, it's 1, 2, 4, then you go 8, 7, 5. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. So you're always starting at the top, going to 4. So 1, 2, miss a number, 4. 1, 2, miss a number, 5. And it's so what you're doing on one side, you're doing on the same. And it, <laughs> I don't know how this works, but it's all at once because if you look at a toroid, this think of this here, and you've got energy coming in and out of the middle, and it forms the, the vortex lines or the magnetic lines of convergence and divergence. We won't get into that math right now. Now, if you were to double all these numbers to infinity, you would see overlapping lines just as I showed here. And these are seen in various magnetic forms, round or rectangular. Each magnet, magnet forms a torus shape. And I believe that the numbers shown here do the same. I just don't have the space or the mindset to mathematically equate everything we do in life because we don't have foreknowledge. The, the point I'm trying to make here is this mathematically can equate our comings and goings that actually enhance the blessings of God or enhance the cursings from the enemy in our lives. It is my belief that if you lined up every single detail of good or bad in your life, you would find an intricate toroidal pattern that could predict the outcome of your future based on patterns of your past. Because numbers are truth and hold no value of past or future, they are just as they always have been. And so we have the ability to change our future at any time that equates to now, today just by changing our frequency and vibration to become more Christ-like. Three, six, nine. And how we become more Christ-like is to line our lives up with the Word of God through the teachings of Jesus. Jesus says repent, and his messages, his ministry was about repenting. Letting your yes be yes, your no be no. Do not divorce, do not call you know, a person named, do not judge. All these teachings that Jesus did over the course of his ministry of three years, we are to emulate that just as his disciples did. When we emulate the lifestyle of Jesus, we are fasting and laying down our sin nature and we are becoming more Christ-like and adopting a heart and mindset rooted in love. So here's another thought. The number nine is constant. Nine can represent everything or nothing. Now this is where we have to get into positive and negative energy. Light and dark, matter and antimatter. The number six and three are the only numbers that oscillate back and forth. These other numbers do not on their own. They oscillate in a pattern of one, three, four, eight, seven, five. One, three, four, eight, seven, five. But six and three is always six and three, six and three, six and three. It's not three and two, three and two, or three and five. It's always six and three, six and three. It's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for infinity. So concerning the six, six number, in the other video, I mentioned that the number six plus six plus six equals 18. One, eight, 18. 
And the number 18 symbolizes bondage. The number one and eight exist on each other, excuse me. The numbers one and eight exist on either side of the number nine. But they are not connected to the number nine in the way they are, but they are only connected to the number nine in the way of eight plus one equals nine. They are not connected to six and three. They have nothing to do with God's oscillating power of love. So what happens is eight plus one equals nine. This is man's number and it's vanity. Oops, let me spell that correctly. Vanity. 18 is the number of sin. 18 can be representative of evil because when we take ourselves out of God's dominating, oscillating the power of frequency and um, vibrant vibrancy, we serve ourselves and we serve, serve the enemy and give ourselves over to the enemy. So we're still serving nine, but which God are we serving? God who belongs to the frequency of love or the God who belongs to the frequency of hate? Remember, God created chaos when he creates peace. So... He's the creator of all things. He's the creator of the enemy. When you understand the patterning of opposites, you will understand that nine has a positive energy and a negative energy, just as all these numbers do. And that's the only thing that separates the number nine from itself is the negative and the positive. That's it. When we are in bondage, as the number 18 represents bondage in the Bible. We are not connected to the oscillating power of the frequency of six and three. And this is where we have suicide, depression, um, different mental disorders and different personality disorders, many emotional dysfunctions, Man tries to line himself up to serve God, thinking that they are serving God, but in totality, they're not. They're not. In reality, they're not. God does say that some of us Christians end up honoring God with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. When we are in bondage, we are used to serving ourselves, showboating kingdom power, just as secret societies have done. People follow the kingdom power through meaningless signs and wonders. This is acting in a conditional parameter, a conditional parameter of society's love. God's parameter of love is unconditional. This number 18 shows us that we're living in a form of godliness but it has nothing to do with God it serves vanity serving God in vanity will not gain you entry into heaven I'm sorry to say that it breaks my heart to say that but hopefully this helps you to understand how important it is to follow Jesus like I said I myself follow demons and I know demons are real on an energetic frequency oh. Their power is fierce. It is fierce and it is very strong. Through sleep paralysis, it's it's wicked. It's wicked and it's diabolical. And uh, if there's nothing that you get from this video, please take away that it's important for you to line yourself up with God's frequency of love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. God is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not rude, it does not boast, it keeps no record of wrongs, it does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love never fails. And I just paraphrased 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8 for you. I encourage you to read the books of John, all of them. 
the book of John, the books of John, first John, second John, third John, all those books, because God calls us to repentance through Jesus. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wicked work. Jesus says repent. It isn't good enough that we live by grace alone. Everybody is under the gift of grace. That's why we have this life to live. This life we live buys us time to get our hearts right with God. It allows us to get our lives right with God. When we live and walk in unconditional love, we have unconditional favor for everyone. This is how we love our enemies and love each other. God's love does not change. We are called to not to change either in our love that we have. Society's love is conditional and it's very, very hurtful. And I know for myself, my life changed all for the better when I lined my life up with the teachings of Jesus, I got rid of things that my eyes were drawn to, things that my heart was drawn to, things that I couldn't let go of. You know, Paul says that when we sin, when we use our bodies to sin, we are sinning against God because our bodies are God's temple. So that means get rid of sexual sin, addiction in the form of um, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, um, eating disorders, anything that harms your body, your, your soul, your spirit is in your blood. Anything that goes into your body, that goes into your bloodstream, is directly negatively affecting your spirit man inside of you. I just went off my script. I apologize, but this is so vitally important. We know that Jesus is coming back soon, and the time is now for us to live in our kingdom power. And Jesus tells us that we are perishing for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge is empowering. Knowledge is what sets our mind free. When we have knowledge, we are able to make informed decisions for ourselves.